On the outside, Nanny Doss appeared to be a very kind-hearted neighbor, wife, and mother, but on the inside lurked something else entirely. This week, we discuss the giggling nanny. Let's open the serial killer file. Nancy Hazel was born on November 4th, 1905 to an underprivileged family in Alabama. Brought up with one brother and three sisters, Nanny and her siblings lacked a proper education. With an over-controlling father, all the children were forced to work long hours on the family farm and were forbidden to engage in healthy social lives. Nanny experienced an accident at the age of seven when she hit her head against a metal bar while riding a train with her family. She would later blame the accident for her depression, severe headaches, and daily blackouts while growing up. Nanny grew up to resent her father. As a teenager, Nanny and her sisters were restricted from ever wearing makeup and clothing that removed remotely made them appear attractive in order to limit the girl's interaction with boys. Nanny was 16 years old when she married her first husband, Charlie Braggs, a man that worked at the same factory as her. The two had dated four short months before tying the knot under the approval of her father. The newlywed couple never got to experience a honeymoon phase in their marriage, however. Charlie had no family and was raised by a mother who never married either. Because Charlie was all his mother had, he insisted that his mother lived with them. Living in a controlled environment, Nanny was subjected to her mother-in-law's rules and went on to give birth to four daughters between 1923 and 1927. Young and living in an unhappy marriage, Nanny began taking up heavy drinking and smoking in order to get through her days. It wasn't long before the marriage hit its lowest point. Raising four children, Nanny rarely saw Charlie after he began cheating on her. Things only got worse when in early 1927, two of their daughters unexpectedly died from suspected food poisoning. The grieving process seemed to be cut short when Nanny received her daughter's life insurance money. Charlie accused Nanny of poisoning the girls and fled with their firstborn daughter, leaving behind their newborn in Nanny's care. After the death of her mother-in-law, the couple divorced in 1928. Nanny took custody over the remaining two daughters after Charlie stated that he feared his wife and refused to eat her food whenever she was in a sour mood. Fallen back on a failed marriage and with two children to support, Nanny turned to romance novels and began to seek out a new partner. After the divorce, Nanny moved to Anniston, Alabama with her kids. Continuing to write for the magazine, Nanny caught the eye of 23-year-old Robert Frank Harrelson. The two began exchanging romantic poetry and gifts to each other until marrying in 1929. High hopes for a new start at raising a family didn't last very long when Nanny moved the girls to Jacksonville, only to discover that her new husband was an alcoholic with a history of criminal assault charges. Despite his past records, the couple were together for 16 years, much longer than her previous marriage. In 1943, Nanny's oldest daughter, Melvina, gave birth to her first son, Robert Lee Haynes, and a second child in 1947. Exhausted from her long hours in labor, Melvina thought she was delusional when she witnessed her mother sticking a hat pin into the head of her newborn and killing the child. Doctors apologized and were unable to confirm the cause of death, believing it could have possibly been birth complications. A few months later, Nanny was taking care of her infant grandson when he unexpectedly died of asphyxiation. The sudden death of the child left the family in a state of shock and grief while Nanny went on to collect $500 of life insurance that she had taken out on Robert just two months prior. After a drunken night at a local bar in 1945, Frank returned home demanding sex from his wife, who declined. Frank became violent and Nanny finally submitted. Nanny insisted that Frank raped her that night, which was the last straw for her. Distraught and angry, Nanny sought revenge the next day by discreetly placing rat poison into Frank's liquor jar, ultimately watching her husband die a slow and painful death that same evening. Nanny was content with killing off as many loved ones as she could and would continue to collect money from their deaths. It didn't take very long for Nanny to move on. Once again, she was able to easily find another suitable man named Arlie Lanning through magazine dating columns while moving to Lexington, North Carolina. After three days, the couple married. However, this was no longer a motive to find happiness for Nanny. Just like her previous husbands, Arlie was known to be a cheater and alcoholic who took advantage of women. For undisclosed periods of time, Nanny would sneak out of town and return in an optimistic state. 
tending to her household duties while her husband sought love from other women. It was during her third marriage when she came to the harsh realization that she would never be able to find the perfect man suitable for someone like herself. In 1950, Arlie suddenly died of heart failure after experiencing flu-like symptoms. Doctors believed his death had been attributed to his heavy drinking, taking Nanny off of everyone's radar. The morning after Arlie's death, his property was burned to the ground. Nanny knew that Arlie's sister would collect the property after his death and did everything she could to stop that from ever happening. Just before leaving town, Nanny went on to visit her mother-in-law, who had also unexpectedly died in her sleep that same evening. In 1952, Nanny was now a 47-year-old woman and aging fast. Realizing she was losing her look, she began searching for older men through a dating agency called the Diamond Circle Club. It was from there she was able to find her fourth husband, Richard L. Morton. Realizing that he was yet another womanizer, Nanny began plotting her kill, until her plans were put to a sudden stop when her elderly mother decided to move in. Unable to kill without getting caught, she took extra precautions, but eventually had no choice but to poison her own mother. Three months following her mother's death, Richard was killed just before Nanny made her final stop to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Desperate for money, Nanny loved the thrill of the kill. However, that thrill soon caught up with her. In June of 1953, Nanny met and married Samuel Doss, a conservative and religious man that highly disapproved of Nanny's romance novels. A few months into the marriage, Samuel was diagnosed by doctors with a severe digestive tract infection after eating Nanny's food. In desperation to collect the two life insurance policies she had taken out on him, Nanny had poisoned Samuel and he died as a result. Samuel's sudden death made doctors suspicious. In October of 1954, Nanny was apprehended for the murder of her husband after an autopsy concluded that Samuel had ingested an alarming amount of arsenic. On May 17, 1955, Nanny pled guilty for the 11 murders she committed from the 1920s to 1954. Nanny confessed to all of her murders in a delighted manner, appearing to have no remorse for the murders of her infant grandson, her mother, four husbands, and previous mother-in-laws. The state did not pursue the death penalty and sentenced Nanny to life in prison, and she went there giggling. Nanny Doss died of leukemia in the hospital ward of the Oklahoma State Penitentiary on June 2nd, 1965, at the age of 59. That's all in this file. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about serial killers or other dark topics, be sure to subscribe to my channel now. And I will see you next Sunday.